So after he was killed, um, you know, the story that we all know in the public now is that U.S. officials uh, leaked stories to the press saying that he was 21 years old. He wasn't. He had just turned 16, and we have the birth certificate to prove that. He was born in Colorado in 1995. Uh, then um, they said that he had been with Ibrahim Albana, who was an Egyptian uh, member of al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. And, and the dominant story that's been floated is that the U.S. was trying to kill Albana and that um, Abdurrahman al Laki just happened to be next to him, which is an incredible coincidence that this 16 year old kid, whose father was killed two weeks earlier in a targeted assassination by the U.S. government, is then killed himself while in the company of another member of AQAP. The CIA said that Albana wasn't even on their target list, so opening up the speculation that it was a unilateral JSOC operation, Joint Special Operations Command operation. When I spoke to I spoke to a JSOC guy who was in Yemen at the time working on that strike, and he wouldn't tell me any of the details, but he said, the guy we were trying to get, we didn't get. Um, and I said, well, what, how did you feel when you saw that this teenage American citizen had been killed? And he goes, well, there's a reason I'm not doing this anymore. And, um, and so we don't know who it was. Was Ibrahim Albana there? If he was, AQAP says he's very much alive and that it was lies that he was killed, if, if, if that's the claim. Then the U.S. said, well, it was an outrageous mistake. This is all anonymous, though. They'll never, they'll never talk about it. President Obama's never been asked about the killing of this teenager. My new reporting, though, um, that, uh, that I did very recently, uh, suggests that um, there, this was a great controversy within the White House. I understand from a former senior official of the administration who worked on this program at the time uh, that when it became clear that Abdul Rahman al had been killed, that President Obama was furious, and that John Brennan, who at the time was the president's homeland security and counterterrorism advisor, the guy running all of these operations, that Brennan believed or suspected that it was an intentional hit against Anwar al son, this 16-year-old kid, and ordered a review. And I asked this former senior official what happened with the review, um, and he said, I don't know. And then when I got in touch with the White House recently, and, and, um, and I exchanged a series of emails with the National Security Council spokesperson, um, she told me that she wouldn't discuss any of the specifics about this and, and, and said that they're not going to talk about operational details or, the, or any of their reviews, and then pasted a boilerplate response about drone strikes into the, into the email. Um, but then when I asked this former senior official, so if the, if the, if the narrative on this is that it was a mistake, um, then why didn't you say that? Why didn't you say, you know, this 16-year-old U.S. citizen was killed as collateral damage or, or, you know, we were intending to get someone else and we didn't do it? And he said, look, we had just killed three U.S. citizens in a two-week period, two of whom weren't even targets, Samir Khan and Abdul Rahman al -Laki. It doesn't look good. It's embarrassing. That's, that's what this official said to me. So what, what, what my understanding is now is that they killed these three U.S. citizens, two of whom weren't targets, one of whom was a 16-year-old kid whose Facebook page you can look at online and photos you can look at online and see who, what kind of a person he was. And the best they can come up with is, we haven't said anything to his family because it was embarrassing for us politically. And that, that says a lot about where, where we're at with these drone strikes.